Assalamualaikum, my name is Saratul Sunar Binti Saidin. I will present about what is bond and suku. What is bond? Bond is a loan to a company, government or any organization uh, from the amount that is lent and interest that is paid. Uh, the proof of the loan and the amount is the investment instrument that we call bond. The Malaysia bond, one of the most attractive among current account surplus and resigned community price. Malaysia being Islamic country lead to development Islamic bond market which is suku and what is suku okay suku is a certificate equal value represent undivided ownership underlying asset services or investment in particular project or special investment so the net presenter will explain why have to invest in suku and bond that's all for me thank you Assalamualaikum, my name is Noor Shafika Binti Shamabidin. I will continue about why invest in bond and suku. One of the most secure way to make investment is by buying bond and suku. Suku is an Islamic bond that complies with Sharia complying regulation. Out of many ways of investing, investing in bond and suku is more accurate than the other. The first reason why we should invest in bond and suku is fixed income. Bonds will give a consistent income stream according to the payment schedule. Some company will pay quarterly, semi-annually, annually and more term as promised in the certificates. Bonds are typically considered a fixed income investment compared to stock, especially since bond returns are not tied to profitability. As a bond investor, you receive the same return regardless of uh, whether a company makes record profit or lose. But they do come with certain risks as well. The risks uh, associated with uh, bond investment are generally low they are not completely absent. For example, bond investors are subjected to credit risk if the insurer default on, on its uh, debt obligation. Liquidity risk if the bondholder is unable to sell the bond as there are no interest buyer or interest rate risk which uh, could either reduce or increase the market value of a bond. Second is capital loss. If an investor buy a bond and hold the bond until it matures, the face value of the bond is returned. Because of this, uh, bonds do not experience capital loss uh, unlike a dividend paying stock uh, had for a similar time period. If the stock price were higher, there would be a profit. If the stock price were lower, there would be a loss or loss of capital. Even though it is said that inflation uh, caused a capital loss in bond investing, it should be taken into account that inflation does uh, that to all other investment too unless the investment increase in value because because of inflation for example real estate and commodity third is creditable credit rental agency bond in malaysia are read by the malaysia renting corporation barha marc and ram holding this company are the one that hold important credit opinion that are uh, need by investor to make investment decision each agency use unique related base uh, score to indicate if a debt has a low or high default risk and the financial stability of its issuer. RAM and MARC use AAA as uh, their score to a prime grade investment. The development of Malaysia bond uh, market requires credible credit rental agency to provide investor with an objective and impactful uh, opinion on the quality of tap issuer. Furthermore, it is a uh, critical that domestic credit rental agency maintain their credi credibility and reliability in the eyes of investor and other market participants. What is diversified portfolio? Most people presume that bonds are only for the very old, very rich, 
uh, are very conservative investor. However, the true is point are the are an important component of a strategic, uh, strategically diversified portfolio at any stage of an investor life. Having a diversified portfolio, which include bond uh, over the long term, can often provide uh, comparable return uh, with less uh, risk than a portfolio devoted to only one type of investment over a longer period of time. It is recommended for a for any investor to balance their portfolio with high, medium and low risk investment product. And bond can provide investment stability to help uh, buffer against the vol volatility of the stock market and offer tax-free income, uh, which can help with uh, your living expenses and ultimately uh, help you achieve your financial goal. And the last one is bond lower portfolio risk. Bond can be a wonderful addition to an investment portfolio. Uh, the kind of addition that allow one to sleep better at night. The bonds provide a steady income to be invested into other, possibly more speculative security. Of course, this uh, assumes that uh, the income is not need for current living expenses. And all investment strategy is for an investor to place all the investment money in coupon government bond and reinvest the interest payment into common stock. The principle is never at re assume the bond are held to maturity. Only the coupon payment become a risk uh, when invested in the common stock. If the common stock is carefully selected, the investor get the best means of growth and no risk to principal. That's all from me and I will pass to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Sarah Aisha binti Muhammad Afizal in number matrix of 17 DIB 18F 2003. So today I will be representing to you about types of bond and sukuk in Malaysia. So let's go through type of bond first. Uh, in generally, bond can be separated into government bonds and corporate bond. Uh, government bonds are bonds that are issued by the government, which is their purpose to fund uh, for economic development. Government bond, also known as sovereign bond, uh, it is a debt security issued by the national government. Um, generally with a promise to pay the uh, periodic interest payment and to repay the face value on the maturity date. Usually, it is denominated in a country's own currency, in which case the government uh, cannot be forced to default, uh, although it may choose to do so. Uh, Malaysian government securities are its um, free marketable debt instrument. Uh, which is issued by the government of Malaysia and it is sold by the competitive auction and facilitated by the Bank Negara Malaysia itself. Uh, the main purpose of government securities is to raise funds uh, from domestic uh, capital market to finance the government's development, expenditure and working capital. There are several types under government bond which is Malaysian Government Securities, MGS, Malaysian Treasury Bills (MTB), Malaysian Islamic Treasury Bills uh, (MITB), um, Government uh, Investment Issues uh, (GII). So I will choose two of uh, types under under this under this government bond, which is I will explain about Malaysian Government Securities (MGS), which is MGS is a coupon bearing. Uh, it is a long-term bond issued by the government, which is it is purpose to raise fund for development expenditure. And they are the most uh, actively traded bonds. Uh, and the and the BNM regularly issues the um, MGS three year, five year, seven year, ten year uh, of MGS as a benchmark uh, securities for the development of a benchmark yield curve. Uh, as we know, Bank Negara Malaysia. Uh, it role as a banker and advisor to the government and they will be advisors uh, on the details of the government securities issuance and facilitate such um, issuance through various uh, market infrastructure that it owns and operates. This MGS uh, is issued by the tender via appointed principal dealers and it is drawn through the fully automated system for tendering, whereby the coupon rate is determined by the weight average of the successful bid. 
Other than that, MGS are a fixed rate and the coupon bearing bonds with a bullet repayment of principal open the maturity. And the coupon payments are made uh, semi-annually which is uh, two years. Uh, and this MGS is issued by the competitive auction um, Bank Negara Malaysia itself on behalf of the government. Next, I will explain to you about the government investment issues, GII, uh, and it is still under the government bond. So, GII is a long term and it is non-interest bearing government securities, uh, which is it is based on the Islamic principle issued by the government of Malaysia for funding developmental expenditure. GII uh, is issued through the a competitive auction by Bank Negara on behalf of the government. Same goes to the uh, Malaysian government uh, securities and the funds are used for the development expenditure. Uh, it is issued with original maturities of 3 year, 5 year, 7 year and 10 year. So finish about the government bond, we'll be heading to the corporate bond. What is corporate bond? So corporate bond is a bond that uh, issued by the corporations or companies uh, which is their purpose to fund their operations or special project. And the corporate bonds will be rated by the credit agencies to determine uh, their capability to repay uh, the loan to the investor. However, they also can be choose uh, not to be uh, rated but they need to pay higher uh, interest to the investor. So here are some of parts uh, corporate bonds uh, in Malaysia. First, we have long term bond. Uh, second, we have zero coupon rate. Third is corporate guarantee bond. And lastly is um, perpetual bond. So I will be explain more about zero coupon rate under the uh, corporate bond. So zero coupon rate, it is a regularly bond. Uh, usually will make interest payment on every interval payment uh, and it will be pay the payment in lump sum at the end of the maturity. For an example for the zero coupon rate is Khazanah National Burhan. So we will be heading to the corporate guarantee bond which is it is under the corporate bond. This bond are bond which the payment of uh, interest and principal are guaranteed by the government. So the payment will be made by the government itself as the final option in the worst uh, scenario or case, such as a bankruptcy or insolvency. So besides government, other than government, uh, which is third parties, such as bond insurance companies, uh, fund entities or parents companies of the subsidiaries can also be a guarantor for the bonds issued by the corporation. Uh, in Malaysia, this corporate guarantee bond is um, Mustak Hydro. And I have finished uh, explaining to you about types of bond. Now, I will be moving on to the types of suku. So, as you know, uh, suku is an Islamic bond or a financial certificate uh, that comply with Sharia law. So there are different types of suku with uh, which each type is different purpose and function. So we have several types of suku, which is we have seven types. Firstly is suku mudaraba, uh, profit sharing. Suku musharaka, profit and loss sharing. Thirdly is suku murabaha. Uh, cost plus or cost plus sale or we call as deferred uh, payment. Fourth is suku wakalah agent. Uh, fifth is suku ijarah leasing. Uh, sixth is suku salam which is deferred delivery purchase. And lastly is suku istisna, uh, Islamic project bond. So back to the suku mudarabah uh, profit sharing. It is a certificate that represents a project or activities that are managed uh, on the basis of Mudarabah contract. It is a partnership based on a trust. And there will be one party that we call as a Mudarib who will be managed the project. Beside Mudarib, we have um, another party we call as Rabumau, uh, owner of the capital who is will be providing the capital of 
um, project and will be on shares in the equity Mudarabah where his returns will be follow the percentage of ownership uh, share. In this transaction, uh, the investor are Robumal, uh, which is capital owners, and the certificate holders of the asset of Mudarabah. In this Mudarabah suku, uh, the suku holder itself it is a silent, silent partner uh, who don't who don't and uh, will not participate in the management of underlying asset, project, or uh, business. So the working partner in the suku is obligator or issuer, which is as the working partner, it will be generally entitled uh, to the fee or share of the profit, and which is spelled out in the initial contract with investor. Not to be forgotten about the profit, uh, the profit from the investment activity is shared uh, between both parties based on a pre-agreed agreement uh, ratio depending on how well the asset or project uh, performs. Losers, capital providers will be bare the losers if any and except if it was uh, due to the negligence or mismanagement of the venture. Uh, lastly is about suku ijarah which is leasing. In the Islamic finance industry, uh, the term of ijarah is broadly understood to the mean of the transfer of the usufruct of an asset to another person in exchange for rent claim from him or more literally uh, as a lease. So the basic of ijarah, uh, basic idea is uh, the investor which is suku holder are the capital provider of the asset and are entitled as the uh, to receive the return when the asset is leased. In this uh, scenario for an example the SPV which is lesser will be received the suku proceeds from the investor uh, in return each investor get a portion so the SPV will be buy the asset from a seller and then will be lease it back under an ijara contract so the company that uses uh, the asset and pay uh, pay the rental fee to the SPV is called as the lease however the ownership um, of the asset itself is not transferred and will always remain with the uh, SPV, which is lesser. Generally, in order for a sale uh, to be valid under the uh, Sharia, the object forming uh, the subject matter of the sale must be uh, existent and in, in the physical or constructive possession um, of the seller. Generally, in order for sale to be valid under the Sharia, the object of forming the subject matter of the sale must be existent and in the physical or constructive possession of the seller. So, I have finished my uh, explanation about types of bond and suku. So, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nurul Hikmah binti Ruslan. Metric number 17 DIB 18F2031. We'll, uh, we'll continue our presentation with a topic a risk of investment in bond and suku. Okay, like any investment, bond and suku also offer a balance of risk and return. A bond is a loan that the bond purchase or bondholder makes the bond issuer. If an investor buys a corporate bond, the investor is uh, lending money to the corporation. Uh, in bond and sukuk market, the definition of risk is the outcome of your investment goals will not be realized in the time period that you invest. The balance between risk and return varies by the type of investment, uh, the entity that issue it, uh, the state of the company and the cycle of the securities market. As a general rule, to earn higher return, you have to take a greater risk. Conversely, the least risk investment also have the lowest risk returns. The first risk is interest rate risk. Interest rate risk is the probability of a decline in the value of an asset resulting from unexpected fluctuation in interest rate. Change in the interest rate can influence the bond price movement. Bonds and interest rate have an inverse relationship. When the interest rate rise, the price of the bond will move down. To illustrate the interest rate risk, let's say if the interest rate rise, the value of bond or its price decline. Bondholder will suffer loss from declining price, especially when they want to sell 
uh, bond in the secondary market. However, interest rate risk will not be a concern uh, to bondholders who intend to keep the bond until maturity uh, as they will receive their initial investment back. Secondly is inflationary risk. Uh, inflationary risk is an increase in the price of good and service in a country. As price rise, a single unit of currency lost value as it buys fewer goods and service than it used. Uh, the rising of price, also known as inflation, will impact the cost of living in certain places. The cost of doing business, mortgage and bond yield will be affected by this. Inflation is one of bonds worst enemy as it reduces the future value of the bond. What we in Invest now is not going to earn us the same value later. For example, if we buy bond uh, of uh, 100,000 with a maturity of 5 years, but, uh, then by the time of the bond matures, uh, 100,000 in the next 5 years uh, do not have the same value as 100,000 now. This is due to inflation. Lastly, reinvestment risk. Reinvestment risk a risk that investor will receive a lower return when they reinvest the money in new or other securities. For example, when a two-year uh, RM100,000 bond with an interest rate of 4% has reached maturity, the prevailing interest rate goes down to 3%. Uh, when the investor want to uh, reinvest their money in new bond after the previous one matured, they receive less rate of return. In a low interest rate environment, the investment risk is higher for calable bond. The issue can uh, redeem the bond before maturity to take the opportunity to issue bond with a lower interest rate. Investor will lose the expected future coupon payment and they have uh, to reinvest in a bond with a lower rate than the previous one. <laughs>